as the summer split comes to a close, we're down to the final four. TSM, CLG, Immortals, and Team Dignitas, all four are headed to Boston, but those who will be playing for the title are yet to be decided. Your semifinals start right now. Look back on 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 years down the line and just be like, yeah, I did that. The trophy is a real tangible thing that you can't argue. At the end of the day, they're the champions, they're the best. You can't say anything about that. Run the jewels, jewels, jewels. Semi-final weekend is here, and our top four teams are prepped and ready to do battle for their chance at the title next week in Boston. Now, fans of both squads have packed the arena today to cheer on their favorite teams as they buy for that competition in Boston. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson here alongside Mark Zimmerman and Joshua Jatleesman. Gentlemen, we've made it two weeks left in the postseason. How are we doing? I can't believe I made it this long because I've been waiting all week for this game to happen. I just thought it would never come. I've been so excited for these semifinals. I mean, we've had great games for all week and long so far. We had the LCK, we had EE right before this, and now NA's turn. So it's been a really hype weekend already. Bit of an upset just before here in, NA, or in EU leading into today. But gentlemen, I want to bring up the bracket and take a look at how our teams made it to this week. And of course, Team Dignitas took down Cloud9 in an upset 3-1 victory to move on and play TSM. That game will take place tomorrow. Today, though, we got Counterlogic Gaming up against Immortals. Counterlogic Gaming, a tough series against Envy to, to make it through to the semifinals. Yeah, that was the one series last weekend that we didn't think would be close, but it ended up being extremely close, and for a lot of it, it looked like Envy would end up winning, but CLG ended up clutching it through in the end. Yeah, there were a couple, you know, bad performances out of some members out of CLG. Afro, in particular, had a, a bad series, was completely abused by Hakuho in laning phase. Omar God was a heavy focus on the side of Envy. They, they kind of exposed him a little bit, and CLG was lucky to get out of this series. And during game four, they were in a pretty big deficit before making a comeback. Yeah, and I would say that CLG's experience Experience did pay off in the end. They kind of defaulted back to the 1 3 1 strategy they used to be so successful in back in game five. Plus, when they were down in game four, they were still able to pull it together. So, the veteran experience did come through to get him here, but it was pretty rough. Yeah, Darshan himself said in the post game interview that the entire organization expects more of themselves. And so, we'll see what, work, what kind of work they've done in the past week to prep for Immortals today. Immortals, another organization that has high expectations for themselves. Again, you know, historically, they haven't found much success in the postseason following tremendous regular seasons. Here they are in another opportunity to kind of shirk that, uh, you know, that feeling, that knowledge that they haven't done well in the postseason prior. Right, and I think this is a, a you know, a pretty different team overall when you look at that. You have Poe Belter as the only returning member, the staff member, they have their sports psychologist back, but otherwise Coach Song has stepped in as well. Smithy's brought a huge veteran leadership. And even in spring, while the team struggled a lot to find, you know, their cohesion and how they wanted to function as a team, you still saw a lot of bright spots there where Cody, Sun, and Ole eventually figured things out and started dominating towards the end of that split and really brought that into the season. Yeah, and I think it's so impressive that this Immortals organization has done a full rebuild in a year, and they're now with a playoff bye once again. Four-fifths of their roster has changed. The number of teams that have tried to do rebuilds in their roster and haven't found the type of success Immortals have is pretty much everyone in the LCS below them right now. So 
it's been very good. And to Mark's point, it's a completely different style of team as well than what used to be successful. The old Hooney Rainover team would steamroll over people with whatever picks they wanted. This team is just playing the game the way they're supposed to and winning that way. Well, and that roster steamrolled from the beginning. Let's not forget that this roster, starting back at IEM in South Korea, not, you know, fantastic performances through to seventh place in the spring. And here we are, the second seed in summer. I mean, just within a 12, you know, month calendar, they've done tremendous work. I mean, even like the, the whole, like, uh, aura around the team is very different where the the Huni Rainover team had that that buff from EU where they dominated over there a lot of these guys were kind of secondhand choices for for a lot of people where you know Hobelter was someone who was kind of left behind uh, Smithy got left off CLG flame was someone who had kind of burned out in China and Korea and they all came together to make what looks like one of the best teams now in North America all right so both of these teams obviously positioning themselves for a win and a chance at the title I'm turning to you gentlemen though to look for your predictions Jat, we're gonna start with you this time around who's taking it yeah, so based on how rough it was for CLG to get through Envy and based on how Immortals has looked against CLG, especially with X Smithy up against his former team, I have to favor Immortals in this series 3-1. There you have it. A vote for Immortals out of Jat. Mark, you aligned or are you uh, going to disagree on this All right, one? well, there's, there's two worlds here. One uh, is that what we saw out of CLG last Sunday is how they're really going to play, and that's a horrible matchup versus Immortals because Ole and Smithy are probably the two best performers on uh, you know, Immortals, and that's the worst two performing members from Sunday for CLG. The other world, and something that we don't talk about enough in League of Legends, is that sometimes you just have a bad day. So I don't know if Afro is gonna play that bad a second series, because that was one of the worst I've ever seen him play before in a playoff series. So in that world, where he bounces back and CLG plays better, it's actually a very close matchup, and I'm gonna take the upset 3-2 CLG. All right, there you have it. So I finally have two split analysts. Great to hear out of them, but we want to hear from you at home. Not only who you think is going to win, but also how you're cheering on your favorite teams with that hashtag, HowILCS. Go ahead and shoot over to at LL Esports so we can feature them throughout the broadcast. That's going to do it for us here on stage, though, as we send it over to the casters. Aframu shares how he thinks the playoff meta will affect today's match. Take a look. I think the meta right now is pretty... Uh, <clears throat> does well for Immortals as a whole in terms of uh, their player style. So tank junglers, you got Smithy. Uh, high priority mids, pressuring or control mages for Poe Belter. Uh, most teams play out bottom lane now with like uh, the high priority bottom picks close to Tristana. You got Thresh, uh, Alistar, Bard for Ole as well. And then top lane just has to farm in general and just try and scale most of the time. And I definitely think that is uh, Immortals style. So this particular meta. So. In terms of them being strong, I think they really play well off of uh, each other in terms of their four-man bottom side of the map. <clears throat> and Flame has definitely uh, come into his own <clears throat> in terms of working with the team, unlike his past splits. Hello.